The red dot is on, we are recording. All right, well, what's going on today? It's been a flurry of creativity lately, so we're just gonna push through this and we're gonna see what's gonna happen here. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of feedback, you know, part of what holds me back and makes me stop doing things is going, God, who am I doing this for anyway? Because obviously nobody's going to look at it, so what am I doing this for? Just as a pure ego project, pure whatever. And then you push through that a little bit, and then all of a sudden you get three views, six views. It's like, whoever you guys are, thank you. <laughs> you know, I always find it annoying when, when, uh, when all the vloggers are always thanking their subscribers and waving at them and stuff, but man, it, it, you know, when you have a big channel and you're, and you're going, thanks guys, thanks for subscribing and all that, it's like, yeah, you got three million people that are watching or whatever. But man, when, when, I, when I went from averaging zero views to like six views, that, that's huge. Whoever you are, whoever the three of you that are watching it twice, and I'm, I'm sure I watched it and then, you know, whatever, great, thank you. Anyway. Laid this all out today, where, as you may or may not know, we do things live, one take, unscripted, and unedited. I can't edit it. So, what I get is what I get. And if a take sucks, the take sucks. And the camera stops at 29 minutes and 59 seconds, so that's the maximum length of a video. That said, I'm getting a little bit better at all this stuff. And I'm Gonna keep pushing out through this low quality content as, as I'm as I'm learning and I'm churning and I'm climbing up that S curve. Someday I'll tell you about the S curve. It's not a secret. I learned it from somebody else. So, whatever. But climbing up the S curve, doing a lot of a lot of churning and burning here. But this is a very important topic. So let's say you go to the thrift store and you get yourself a beautiful Chuck Man Joni uh, Fun and Games tape and you put it in and you press play. And I'm not gonna do it because. It hurts the tape player and it just sounds awful and you're like oh no what's wrong you stop it you pull it out and you look and you go oh yeah i forgot to check i'm still working on this camera thing forgot to check the pad see the pad jumping around in there okay so i've processed between myself my parents stuff and a bunch of collections that i picked up recently i'm processed not a lot i'm just starting this but maybe about 500 tapes that are old now and let me tell you, the biggest thing that happens is that, and it kind of sucks, and, well, what are you going to do? Now, this one actually has a pad, and this is why I'm going to walk you through this repair, because this is a very simple repair, and it will save the tape, and you should already know this anyway, and this is kind of a uh, beginner class, but it, it's important, and I'll get to the more advanced stuff in a second here. This is important, so we'll start with this. Now, say you pick up your Andy Simmons and Robert Fripp, which I haven't listened to yet, because when I pulled this one open, I noticed, oh, let's see if I can do this. Oh, oh, come on, focus. Oh, hi, Johnny. Sorry, guys. Anybody? I need a, I need a cameraman that'll work for free. Put up with me. All right, it doesn't have a pad at all, so I lost, the pad's gone, so we got that, and we got this one. So... This is one repair. You get yourself a little piece of plastic, a little something to get on there. You pull the tape out about this far. You can see that. All right, cool. I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit. Pull you off, Johnny. And no, I'm not going to play it because I don't want to copyright strikes. So we'll figure that out eventually. All right, let's see if I can get this. All right. Oh, there I see. All right, so there's the pad. So we'll get in there with a tweezer. And you really just want to be careful with the tape, the outside of the tape, but you know that already. There, now you got that. Now, if you're lucky... Alright, let's see if I can get this... There it is. Don't focus on my fat fingers. There we go. Alright. Uh, there, there, see? So there's the fat pad. It's a little dirty for years of use. And then, you kind of get on, underneath there. You see side view, and so there's the felt, and then there's a little piece of like cardboard or something, and that's where the glue was on it. And don't, it, this is usually what happens. And then there's another piece actually inside here, and I've got a piece on the side. Here it is together. It's this copper-ish thing. I can't do this backwards. Oh, maybe you can see it. Anyway, well that, 
I got I got to get my TV so it's the right direction. See, so there it is. It sits in there and it sits on that. And usually that's what happens. Now, if the copper thing comes out, then you got a big root repair. But that's neither here nor there. Usually that the little plate's in there, and you want the cardboard back. You want you want this thing to be intact. If this thing is coming coming apart or the the felt's pulling apart or whatever, then you you probably need to resort to method two, which is what we're going to get to here. But this all this takes is tweezers and it's just a drop of some kind of crazy glue you put her down in there and you tap her down and you be careful not to put any glue on the felt on the top because you don't want it to plasticize you want to keep it nice and uh, nice and gentle there and there you go and you leave that for about a minute while that sets up and it is very important that you let that set because if you just go right away, it'll smooth all around. Uh, and this is Chuck Man Journey Fun and Games. Uh, this is uh, whoever I got this collection from from the thrift store. I've been going through it. about three dozen tapes of really, really good, smooth. Some Stevie Wonder, some some Tian Warwick. I mean, some weird stuff out of the blues. A bunch of classical stuff. A couple of. Very, very smooth. Um, who was the guy that came out of? But whoever it is, you can tell a lot about it, people. Tom Scott. I'm looking at. I'm looking at my Hot 100 list right now because uh, that's what a bunch of it's in there. Uh, there was some Manhattan Transfer. Just all this like bunch of Chuck Mangione, Steely Dan, Gaucho. Uh, yeah. So you can tell a lot about a guy or a gal. Probably a guy that puts together a collection like that because that, that's a curated picture look into that man's or person's soul really um, if you stop and think about it music was was a big thing back then there wasn't a lot of things you could own there was no video there was no VCR tapes in the 70s and then even in the 80s you didn't really own them you kind of rented movies and and there was no and video games were kind of coming out with computer games, but that was a very niche thing. It wasn't a mass appeal. Uh, you got the Atari, that happened, but that went away. And like a lot of people just do their stuff in an attic and didn't even think about it. But like, um, oh, where was I? Going? Stupid, where was I going off here? But the tapes you had to put together. You had to pay good money. These things were eight dollars back when when you know people made four dollars an hour, and like so people had to work a lot. You know, I mean, it's just it, and you put it together because you, you you thought about it and you really tried to put together the things that you wanted to, and you were going to keep them because these things were were, were actually you had, you had skin in the game to, to run this the whole thing. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm digressing. I'm just rambling but hey guess what it's 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 just interesting when you can see that this one person and, and you kind of kind of get a feel and it's almost like you almost can build a picture of the person if I was a better fiction writer I could build a picture of this person that these tapes obviously were theirs and and I got anyway that's not what these are actually. These come from other different directions, different things, but they, they all have one thing in common. They all had a missing pad. Sorry to digress about that. I will talk more. I will rant longer, more later at some point about people's music collections because I think it's a very interesting thing and it's a very deeply personal thing to take a person's collection like that. It's, um, it's a little weird actually if you think about it too hard. And I, I try not to too much, but. Sometimes I do. So we've got this one now. So this is actually yesterday's gone. This is uh, up this hill and down the other uh, Osborne brothers. It's very old tape. It's very unique. I have not looked it up. Yeah, it doesn't have a J card. I'm I'm assuming this is about 1970 to se or before 75 it's 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 kind of a unique tape it might even be into the 60s i don't know the i haven't even played this yet because i want to show you what somebody else did this is the previous owner of this collection which was a different collection and it 
totally different personality of this set of tapes, but this, it looks like a piece of gauze or maybe, maybe a big felt pad, but either way, if you can see, the tape is actually, you can see it bulging out there. It's out of, out of the clamshell. It's not, it's not, I haven't even played this yet. I hadn't even really thought about what to do with it except kind of to fix it, but it's in my, my novelty section and I, I don't really think about it, but I got to make sure of that. So, so I got to thinking, well, what am I going to do? Now, one of the things you can do, by the way, is when the tape really is broken, I, I take this away before I throw the rest of the, the shell away. I keep this, I keep the J, uh, the, the case, I'll keep the J card or anything that was commercial if it broke. A lot of times what happens is the music will stop and you look and the table keeps spinning on this side, but this side will be stopped. And you're like, oh, oops, and the tape will have been split. And you just, okay, well, whatever. Um, I don't really try to splice them or do anything. The music out there, anyway. I'm not saving music that's gone forever. But, so I started thinking about, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? So I, I, eventually, I can't just recycle these felt pads all the time now. I got these things. These are little furniture pads. Now, these are the smallest ones I could get. And they're eighth inch, and they're by, I think this is a three inch, three eighths inch round. And they're pretty nice. They're a little. Come on, to the finger now. They're pretty nice. They got exactly what we were looking at. There's a little backing with a little foam, a little sticky, and a nice piece of felt on the top. Um, and that's exactly what we need. Now, but you can't just stick a whole dot in there. It just doesn't look right. So the first thing I did is I tried with good old Johnny Horton here. He's been staring at us the whole time. Let's see what's going on. By the way, uh, well, this is 1985, even though it looks really old. Uh, so I did this, and I cut it in half. And it's okay. It's okay, but you can see that, like, well, there's a bulge. It's not as bad as that big old cotton ball from that other one, but there's a little bit of a bulge. And I can already see that it's, like, building up a, a rim because this is kind of weird fuzzy felt. And I, so I tried to sh kind of shave it. I did a couple other ones. So that was like a first attempt. I had a whole batch of tapes, and of course I, they're all mixed in. I could only find a couple of them. But then I got this guy, uh, "Immortal Melodies" of Robert Stoltz. Greetings from Vienna. This was from a different. No, this was from the guy. This was well. I don't know if it's the same people. It's the same person. It was at the, the thrift store all together. It was the same as the Chuck Mangione and them. The nice some waltzes and stuff. I mean, it's really weird. This is an old. Old tape. This is, I think, 1978. I think I caught a copyright on here somewhere. Made in the United States. That's pretty cool. Old tape. But what I did with this is I kind of pared it down even more. It doesn't round out. I cut it in thirds. Now it sticks out far this way, which is kind of silly. I don't know if you can see that with the light and the angle. But it's still a little bit too tall. It's not too bad, but it's a little bit too tall. Now what I kind of did is I tried to shave it with... with with the with the snap knife, and I get in there, and you're, you know, you know it's just it, that kind of made it worse than 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 trying to keep it. So anyway, I'm like, that's not the right thing. Now the other thing is, I couldn't find anything else to order that was less than an eighth of an inch. I couldn't find these pads in a sixteenth of an inch that seemed to be soft enough. And then there was like these big craft sheets, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm looking at them online, and it doesn't make any sense. So finally, what I did. Finally what I did, we made a trip to the craft store and this is what I came home with. This is just peel and stick, craft felt, very skinny, tiny, tiny, and it's just got a little piece of, let's see if I can zoom this. Uh, no, not that, you. Got a little, very skinny piece of felt on this side and then a little paperback and cardboard on the back. Not bad, right? Okay, so. If you look at this, and you look at the width of one of these, it's way too thin. Oh, get on the camera. It's way too thin. Oh boy, okay. So, what you do? Get yourself a piece and you cut it. I want to see it. I got myself prepared here to do this demonstration. We prepared some ahead of time. I already cut a strip like this, 
But what you do, use a straight edge, people, by the way. Use a straight edge. That's important. Take this thing. Cut this. With a snap knife, with a sharp snap knife, and something to cut into. Not your vintage cardboard. And certainly not your dad's workbench. They have a little bit more respect than that. Now what you do is you have two layers on and cut this whatever. I'm just demonstrating. You take the one layer and you peel it and you stick it on top of layer number two. And then you press it real good. And you leave that, put a bunch of weight on that and you leave that pressed so that just becomes one piece of felt. Okay, so you do that, and then you come up with, oh shoot, where is my prop? You come up with a square like this, which you then cut a square, a little piece like this off, which then you can proceed, cut off, Good as new, good looking, good as new. Need a cameraman. Felt pads. And you say, well, are they the right height? Are they the right height? They are pretty dang close. They are pretty dang close. So I'm gonna go with yes. Um, so what that means is now we have this. Now I don't think I want to take that plastic or take the peel the backing off for the felt. Let me see. I think I want to leave that paper backing on and use the super glue. Uh, well, let's experiment. First thing is, can I peel this off? Oh, let's get our tape ready. So what we do, we get our tape ready. We, we use plastic on the tape, we be very nice. There's Johnny staring at you again. All right, so we pull that up. So then we're gonna drop it, because that's what we do. We're gonna drop it right. Um, ho! She's a jumping bean tonight. That's what happens when you try to show off to your three friends in your YouTube channel. There we go, and you just push that down a little bit. And then if you push it down, that metal thing will click in and you just gotta snap it back up. But anyway, there you go. And look at that. You're, on, you're good on there. Look at that, good as new. That's almost looking, that's sharp, isn't it? So, we're gonna see now. Is it pushed up enough? I don't know, we're gonna find out. I think it is plenty because it doesn't have to touch it all the time. I like this piece of felt. It's nice and stiff and not too fuzzy. And I hope that this is a good fix for everybody. So thanks for watching. And that's how you fix your pads for 99 cents and some super glue, maybe. I will report back after. Well, you know what? Let's see. Well, no, I don't want to get the copyrights. I don't want to get the copyrights. But it looks like that, that glue is going to hold, so we'll see. Otherwise, I might just put a drop of crazy glue on it like I fixed it, because I might have to fix it again. But for 99 cents, I think I'll be fixing a 1,000 tapes. Anyway, 
Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are going to look at some some of the weird tapes when I get enough of them. But anyway, that's enough for now. Thank you very much. Good night.